Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to a new Mod Spotlight slash update on Mistcraft. It's been a long time since I've done a Mod Spotlight on Mistcraft. In fact, so long that I feel like I should probably just cover the whole mod altogether because there's been so many changes. I could probably spend about five minutes covering the uh, um, already existing functionality from my last Mod Spotlight and then spend plenty of time talking about the things that have changed since the latest versions of Mistcraft. Those of you who are not aware, Mistcraft is a mod that allows you to add a bunch of different dimensions to the game. Um, it's pretty much an unlimited number of dimensions. I say unlimited because I think the limit is something like 2 billion, so it's basically unlimited. Um, and you can customize these dimensions with whatever biomes and customizable features and all kinds of other stuff that you can't get in vanilla Minecraft as well. So without further ado, let's start checking out Mistcraft, how to write your own custom linking books, and how to do all kinds of cool interdimensional travel. Alright guys, let's get started. So let's look at the basics of Mistcraft first. All we need to do in order for Mistcraft to work is get ourselves a book. And to go along with that book, we need a feather. Now there's two recipes that you're going to want to know pretty much straight off. Combine a book with a feather and you get a descriptive book place a book by itself in a crafting table and you get a linking book. Now the linking book is very important and I'm going to use the linking book inside my little Mistcraft library, my 9x9 of cobble. Um, I'm going to create the linking book right here where I'm standing. Okay, Linking books will automatically inscribe themselves with the current age that you're in. Right now I'm in the overworld, just the world where I started by default. And it encodes three pieces of information. The current age that you're in, and age is another word for dimension, uh, it'll also encode the XY coordinates exactly where you're standing, and it'll also encode the direction that you're facing. So that's what the linking book does. And when you use a linking book, it's going to automatically teleport you directly to that spot. Now, by default, you can't use that within the same age that you're in, but we'll get to that in a minute. The descriptive book is a way to create a new age. You can see that as soon as I create this descriptive book, it's called the descriptive book for age 2. By default, if you use it right now, it's going to randomly assign the properties of this age, and it'll create a new dimension for you to travel to. Let's go there right now by right-clicking on the book, and you'll see age 2 is opened up. There are no symbols in the book just yet, and I'll get to what those are in a moment. All you have to do to link to that age is click on the black square over here on the right. Ta-da! Where did we find ourselves now? Looks like a pretty crazy place. It appears we've landed in a mushroom biome, and uh, it's raining. And over here we've got a uh, plains biome, maybe? And you can see it looks like it's probably a flatlands as well. So, we've got this crazy place to hang out and check out. It's a whole new dimension, an entire new world. You can go explore it and check out all the cool things to do. But right now, all I'm going to do is take my linking book, Remember this guy? This links back to the overworld. If I just right click on it and click on the black square, it'll send me right back to the overworld in the exact position where I was standing when I created the linking book, not where I left from. And the other thing to note is that the age 2 book is right here on the floor. When you use a book, it falls to the floor. It's not going to stay in your inventory. That's okay though. Just right click on it, uh, shift right click to pick it up. Now, let's talk about how to make it so that these books don't fall on the floor. Because the problem is, when they do land on the floor like that, they will eventually take damage and can be destroyed. And if you destroy your descriptive book without any other linking books that can lead to that age, you will not be able to get back to that age under any circumstances. So, getting yourself uh, a position to store your books is really quite simple. Craft a link book stand using any type of wood and a couple of sticks. And the link book stand can be placed on the ground. I'm going to place it right there. Cool. Your descriptive book can be placed on the link book stand. Awesome. You can see the name of the age right there is age number two. Now when I open up the book, the descriptive book here, you can see that some symbols were automatically added to it. Because this book was uh, traveled to, it randomly chose whatever symbols it wanted to and encoded them. Mouse over the symbols to find out what they are. So this is a medium biomes age with a mushroom island, mushroom island shore, and extreme hills edge. Okay, so those are the three biomes that are available in this age. You will not find any other biomes when you travel to this age or dimension. It's a dark world, which means it's a little bit darker than most areas. It's an eternal storm, so it's always going to be a lightning storm. Whenever you go there, all the time, 100% lightning storm. It's also got normal passage of time, and it's a flat land, meaning there's no hills or anything else like that. Pretty awesome. So let's travel right back there by right-clicking and again clicking on the white area. Cool. We've made it back. How awesome. I like it. 
So we've seen how we can randomly generate um, some symbols here. Let's go ahead and take this descriptive book out and let's talk about the notebook. So the notebook is crafted with just nine pieces of paper. Pretty straightforward. A notebook can be placed inside a writing desk. A writing desk looks like this. Pretty simple, just need a feather and some ink sacs, not a big deal. And the writing desk opens up with an interface as follows. All you gotta do is place your notebook that you've crafted in the left hand side of the writing desk. Now by default, when you first get a notebook like this, it's gonna be empty. There's no symbols stored in your notebook. But by randomly traveling to ages, we discovered some symbols when we went there. And by placing your descriptive age book in the top right slot here, you can see the biomes that were assigned and all the symbols assigned to that descriptive book. And now those were encoded into your notebook. So you've discovered how to write the symbols for all these different things. You can figure out the, uh, the different uh, biomes, the different biome controllers, and some of the other stuff that I talked about a moment ago. Now, before we go into too much more, what I'm going to do is change it up a little bit. Um, if you want and you're cheating, you can just jump into creative mode and hand yourself a notebook out of the creative mode inventory. That notebook comes pre-customly filled with all the cool stuff um, that are available in Mistcraft. So for the rest of this spotlight, I'm going to be using a um, creative mode notebook and I'll show you some of the um, different stuff you can create in these uh, different worlds. So let's go ahead and create a custom age right now. All we have to do for this is take our descriptive book and place it in the writing desk. You can see it's age 4. I already traveled to age 3 during some testing. I'm going to rename this age to Dyer's First Age. So you can name your ages. You don't have to stick with the default age names when you write your books. Now we can define whatever symbols we want. Now the important thing to note about writing ages is sometimes there can be instability in the ages, and you want to watch out for that, especially randomly created ages. You want to be a little careful and make sure your age has all the things it needs to be nice and stable. If you don't write them properly, bad things start to happen to your age and it will eventually be destroyed. So uh, I'll show you an example of that later on in this video. But for now we've got Dyer's first age. Looks pretty cool. Um, all we have to do is just click on the symbols we want. Now keep in mind that there's no erase function. So if you put a symbol in your book that you don't want to have, it's stuck there. So be very careful and make sure you're doing exactly what you want. And I'll show you the different tabs right now of what you can create. Your biome controller tab here specifies what type of biomes you're going to have. Not the exact biomes that um, you're going to have, but the type of biomes. And your options are checkerboard biomes. For this, you can only choose two biome types, and they literally form a checkerboard pattern. It's really neat. You can also choose huge biomes. So that's what I've just clicked on here. So your biomes are going to be a lot larger than they would normally be. Okay, you've also got large biomes, medium biomes, which is the default, so the standard biome size is medium, and large and huge are going to be much larger than the default medium biome, so your biomes will be larger. You can also have a native biome controller, which basically means it's going to be the same as your overworld. Then you can have single biome, meaning you're only going to have one biome altogether, and then small and tiny. Tiny is hilarious, by the way. So I've chosen huge biomes. If you choose checkerboard, you're only allowed to choose two biome types. And if you choose single biome, you're only allowed to choose one biome type. If you choose any more than that, you're going to run into some instability. But with huge biomes, you have to choose three or more. Anything other than checkerboard and single biome, for that matter, you have to choose three or more biomes. So since I wanted to choose three or more biomes, I'm going to go with, uh, let's do desert. We can choose, uh, how about plains? and maybe, I don't know, ice planes. That sounds pretty cool. You can put as many or as few as you want with a huge biome as long as it's at least three. And there's a lot of different options here. You can even have a hell biome, which is pretty interesting. I'll go ahead and throw that one in there. You can also have the uh, sky biome, which is basically the end. And I believe you'll have an ender dragon in there if you check that out. So we've checked out biomes. The other symbol options are lighting. You can have the bright age, which means it's always going to be the maximum light level, even when you dig underground. So if you dig into a cave, it's going to be plenty bright in there, and it's going to look at like the maximum light level everywhere. The problem is this is only visual, and monsters will spawn, so be careful. Dark is just darker than normal. So it's going to be pretty much a darker age than you'd normally be used to. And standard lighting is just normal, just the standard normal lighting, which is what I'll choose for this biome. Now your sky options are really neat. You can choose the color of the sky and fog in here. You can choose the color of the clouds. You can choose the color of the sky and the sunset. So I could choose, for example, let's check some stuff out. I'm going to go with blue clouds. That sounds awesome. And I'm going to go with a... 
Ooh, you can also do chromatic clouds, which means they randomly change color over time. I'm going to stick with uh, probably, let's just go with standard stuff. You can do chromatic for everything now. That's awesome. So I went with blue clouds, and I'm going to go with uh, probably green fog. That sounds neat. And I'm going to do a red sky. Definitely sounds cool. Now, the cool thing about these color systems, by the way, is you can combine colors. So if you were to choose, for example, a uh, blue sky right here and a red sky, you'd wind up with a purple sky. So combining colors is pretty neat. And you combine a bunch of different colors and you'll get different hues. It's really pretty uh, impressive the different combinations you can come up with. Terrain features tells you what kind of terrain features you're going to have. Um, you can choose caves, crystals, which is a special um, item added in Mistcraft. You can also choose to have dungeons or not. Glowstone crystals can be spawned. Uh, let's go ahead and put those in there. Huge trees creates, exactly like it sounds, some really big trees, another Mistcraft addition. Uh, lakes, lava lakes, I'll put those in, whether or not you want mine shafts. Obelisks just creates giant obelisks of obsidian. They're pretty neat. Whether or not you want ravines. And a star fisher. I'm going to show you what that is in just a moment. Whether or not you want strongholds and villages. And wooden tendrils is another neat little uh, addition by Mistcraft. And I'll show you some of these in just a moment. Your terrain generation tells you what type of world you're going to have. If you choose standard terrain, it's just going to be pretty normal. And flat is like we saw a moment ago. It's a completely flat world. A cave world is completely underground, and you'll always be underground. I'll show you an example of one of those in a moment. And a void world is completely empty. It skips all terrain generation, and you're literally going to be standing on one block within a void. Again, I'll show you that in a little bit. For now, I'm going to go with standard terrain. Next, you have your time options. You've got a lot of different ones. You can have eternal day, which means it'll always be daytime, or eternal dusk, night, etc. So if you want it to always be night or always day, you can choose that, and the sun will never move. You can also choose fast time, which means time travels faster than normal, and you'll have a shorter day and night. Normal time, which is exactly like it sounds normal, and slow time, which will be a slower day and night. I'm going to go with eternal day. Your next tab are your weather options. You can have it always raining, including in the desert. You can have it always snowing, including in the desert. You can have eternal storm, which is always a lightning storm. Eternal weather, I guess that's any weather, just constantly cycling. Fast weather, no weather, normal weather, overcast, and slow weather. Pretty cool. I like all those options. I'm going to go with, uh, I'll just leave it uh, no weather for now. And finally, a world modifier. Accelerated, charged, Densors and Skylands. Skylands creates a Skyland type effect. It's really pretty neat. I'll show you one of those. Dense Ores gives you more ores, but it's guaranteed to give you instability. So if you ever use this symbol, you will have instability in your age and it will eventually break down and get destroyed. Uh, you can have a Charged Age, which means there's always lightning, even when it's not raining. And an Accelerated Age, I believe, causes the world to uh, just move a little bit faster. So I think you get more ticks per second or something like that. So let's just uh, leave these options out for now, and we'll take our book out. Awesome. So those are the all the different types of ages you can create with Miscraft. I'm going to go ahead and place Dyer's first age here and travel to it. And it's going to go ahead and travel. As you can see, once the world starts to load around me, come on. We got pretty much exactly what we asked for. We got a nice red sky with a green fog. And uh, I should probably turn on clouds. And you can see we got some blue clouds. How cool is that? Very cool. And we got the biomes we asked for, as well as the glowstone crystals, since we asked for that. So we should have a plains biome, and they should actually be pretty large. I'm going to go ahead and switch it on to creative mode here, just so I can fly around and check out some of this cool, awesome stuff we've got. So you can see there's the desert biome I asked for, and down there is the ice biome that I asked for. Pretty neat. And I wonder if, oh, there we go, a hell biome. Now, believe it or not, hell biomes are actually um, kind of look like plains biomes, typically. Um, but it does allow endermen and ghasts to spawn, so be careful. Pretty awesome, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And I really like the, do, the new different colored uh, clouds. That's pretty cool. So you can create some really crazy combinations with your ages. Let's go ahead and head back. One thing I like to always do is make sure I have a link book back to my overworld right at the point where you land in this age. So I've got this neat little platform here. I'm going to go ahead and place my overworld linking book right back so I can get home. And ta-da! I am now allowed back home. Cool. 
Next up, I'd like to show you a troubled age, is what I've just created. It's a single biome, but I've chosen multiple biome types. That's going to add instability to the age because it's not able to handle multiple biome types with the single biome identifier. I've also added a few other symbols, and I've added a lot of dense ores symbols to ensure a large amount of instability because I want to show you guys what the instability looks like and the mechanic and how it works. So let's go ahead and travel to my troubled age right now. And here we are. Looks like a pretty interesting age. Uh, first off, I want to point out to you guys that this is a Skylands age. So it looks like the random um, generation of some of the symbols created a Skylands age for us. So you can see there's uh, pretty much just a bunch of these neat little um, floating mountains of stuff. Uh, also, like I said, I chose the dense ores symbols, which basically means you're going to get more ore than you would normally get in an age. So if you look around here at the sides of these things, you can see there's lots of different ores, um, probably a lot more than you would normally get. Get, um, in a distribution that's normal. So tons of ore all over the place. So that's what the dense ores are doing. Now let's wait around for some instability. Um, right now there probably doesn't seem to be too much going on. Uh, there's a potential for some instability over here maybe? I don't know. Nope, that's just a hole. All right, so I'm going to wait for some instability to show up. And basically what it is is some blocks underground that actually just cause problems. And you'll start to see what they look like pretty soon. In fact, I might just go with a standard um, flat biome if I want to show you guys what instability might look like. So I've created a new age called More Trouble. Hopefully this will be a little bit better for uh, some examples of instability. Oh yeah, here we go. Nice plains biome, just normal, nothing too crazy, nothing out of the ordinary, right? Well, lurking below this plains biome, because I put some dense ores symbols in here, is some guaranteed instability. So, over a period of time, this world will become unstable. It's going to be trouble, trust me. So I'll be back in a little bit once I've let some time pass and we can start seeing what instability looks like. So it looks to me like we've encountered one of our first instances of instability. This little hole right here. Under the ground here is an instability decay block, which is actually causing the world around it to start to decay. And uh, what happens is it's eating the world underground and it's forcing all blocks above it to fall all the way down. Let's go ahead and build some stuff up here and just see what happens. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place these guys up and we'll just see how things go. So right here we've got this little cobblestone block hanging out right above what I know to be a decay area. Um, this hole is just going to slowly start to fall apart and it's eating the blocks underground almost like the blue goo mod. Um, yeah, kind of similar to it, in fact, and uh, except it's happening underground instead of above ground. And all the blocks above it start to be affected by gravity and fall. So, uh, yep, looks like that hole might have already gotten a little bit deeper. Don't know if this block is going to fall or not into it, but yeah, bad things are going to start happening here pretty soon. But this cobblestone block will act as a marker for where the instability started. And I'll be back in a little bit once some time has passed to show you guys what's going to start happening. Oh, looks like I found some more instability, two of them kind of nearby each other. Uh, these these two holes, the one right here and the one right over here, are caused by instability. You can see that the blocks are starting to fall down into the earth and they're spreading out sideways. Um, so the block that we had over here was definitely starting to grow, uh, but these ones seem to be even running faster. So we're going to want to keep an eye on these for just a few minutes. But you can see these things are starting to collapse in on themselves. And your age is going to quickly degenerate once this starts to pick up speed. So uh, like I said, I'll be back in a few minutes once these have progressed. Well guys, I am back, and hopefully I'll catch some of this instability mechanic happening. You can see it if you're paying attention, it's starting to fall apart. The world is collapsing around itself. Um, so it's very small and short right now, but you can start to see some blocks are starting to fall. Uh, yep. Definitely got some instability in this age, again, as a result of dense ores symbol being used. Now, if you write your ages properly, you will not have instability. Um, but if you don't write them properly, and they uh, don't have the right number of symbols that correspond with the number of biomes, etc., you may start to run into instability. But it's not going to happen all the time, especially once you get the hang of writing ages. So just wanted you to be aware of the instability mechanic. Eventually, this age will be eaten up by this... Uh, corruption underground and uh, it's going to get pretty crazy. So I'll leave it up to you guys to find out just how intense it can get. But for now I'm going to head back to the overworld and start showing you guys some of the other features of Mistcraft. 
Now, for the next couple minutes, I'm going to show you guys um, just a couple of the different and some of my favorite uh, types of ages you can create. And then I'm going to move on to some of the new mechanics that are available within Mistcraft, um, specifically portals, which are also one of my favorite features. So let's check out uh, some different types of ages real quick. Here's a neat book I just wrote. Pretty much made it so that it's a beach biome, but that's not going to matter. Um, I made it a bright age with a black sky, red clouds, um, black fog, and it's a void age, which means no blocks are going to spawn there. Uh, it's going to be an eternal day with no weather, but it's charged, so it's always going to have lightning. Let's check it out. And here we are. We have a black sky, as promised, and it's a void age. I guarantee you guys, there is nothing in this age. Um, it's pretty much just the platform you land on, and you can use this age to build whatever you want. It's a great place to make a mob grinder if you want, because there's nowhere else for mobs to spawn except in the mob grinder you make, and all kinds of other neat features that are available. And like I said, it's a charged age, so even though it's not raining, you will see lightning, and uh, lightning will just occur all over the place. It's pretty crazy. So that's one of my favorite types of ages to create. And as always, like I said, place a link book back to the overworld, just in case you come here. You should always bring a link book back with you. Now remember I created that age called Dyer's First Age, and I promised you guys I would show you what a starfisher was and how it works? Well, let me go find the starfisher in this age, and then I'll be showing you what's up. And uh, don't mind the world holes, this is 1.3 after all. Now a starfisher, when you have that symbol in the book, you don't have to search too far from your spawn point. Just look around in the immediate vicinity and you should see a giant hole somewhere. I found it over here. And the starfisher is basically a giant hole, and let me show you what happens when you fall into it. I'm just going to fall right through here. Geronimo! Notice there's that little starry field at the bottom. And where am I? Well, I've landed in the overworld. The starfisher is your way out if you ever forget to bring a linking book with you back to the overworld. It will send you to the original spawn point of the overworld, so you'll land at, you know, you know, the first spot that you landed in the overworld when you created the world. Um, so it's not your spawn point in your bed, it's the spawn point of the world in general. So again, this isn't the um, bed, your spawn point, it's actually the world spawn point. So if this were a server, for example, it's where players who first join the server land. So that's what a starfisher does. Pretty awesome. Now I'm creating a new age with a couple different symbols in it. I'm making it a dark age with crystals and wooden tendrils. And it's going to be just a standard age otherwise. Let's check it out. So here's what wooden tendrils are. Literally, wooden tendrils flowing all over your world. Really a neat effect. Um, this is just standard wood, and uh, it looks really cool. Uh, yeah, awesome stuff, wooden tendrils. Definitely one of my favorite symbols. And crystals are a very important resource for Mistcraft. I'm going to just show you guys here. I'm going to walk over and harvest some with a drill. Um, so you can use, I believe, the pick to harvest these guys as well. It takes a little bit of time to harvest them, but they're very useful and very cool. And it looks like they got a retexture, which I'm pretty excited about because they look awesome. Let me bring you back to the overworld real quick, and I'll show you guys what these are all about. However, before I travel back to the overworld, I'm just a few feet from the spawn point in this wooden tendrils age. I'm going to create myself a new linking book that links directly to this age. Remember I said a linking book is going to link you to the age and the XY coordinates of where you're standing, so the center of this little 9x9 pen I created, and it's also going to store the direction. So there's the linking book that I just created that'll lead back to this age. And for now, I'm going to create and place the linking book that leads back to the overworld, right here. So here's my overworld linking book. Cool. And I'll be right back. So crystals are a really neat mechanic. Let's show you what you can do with them right now. First off, you'll want to craft with uh, these items right here a book receptacle. Pretty important to make. And then take your crystals outside. And with these crystals you can make portals. Portals can be any shape and size as long as they're completely uh, enclosed. So for example, I could build a portal like this. There you go. And all you have to do is place your book receptacle on any of the crystal blocks, and in there you want to place a book that's going to lead to where this portal leads. So remember I made that linking book earlier to age 11, which is where I was at before. Simply drop your book into the age 11, and it'll create a portal within that area. And you can take the book out whenever you want. You can also use pipes and pneumatic tubes on this book receptacle to automatically put items in and out. Simply walk through the portal, 
and you teleport exactly to the point where you were standing when you created the link book. So here we are inside our spot that we created earlier. How cool is that? So the portal is going to work with link books and descriptive books. So if I were to put the descriptive book in there, it would teleport me right into this area. And the link book teleports me to where I was standing when I created the link book. Now the best part about these portals is entities can travel through them. Entities include items that you, for example, drop. As I drop items through, they're going to just fly through the portal. Ta-da! And they'll land on the other side. I can even throw some of these seeds in there. Now the other important thing that's an entity, for example, are minecarts. So if we have a minecart system set up here, as we do right now, and we were to send this minecart right through, let's give it a shot. Yoink! The minecart travels right through the portal. And now I'm going to do my best to try and not pick up the items as I land. But there we go. The minecart landed there, and you can see the seeds that I dropped earlier, as well as my cobble came back into my inventory because I landed right where they landed. So. Items, entities, and even animals can travel through Mistcraft portals. You could drop some sheep or some pigs in there, and it would work just fine. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have portal guns, so not a terribly easy way to get uh, sheep or pigs to fall through that portal at the moment. All right, let's go for broke. Mr. Sheep, I'm going to try and entice you to come through this portal. Come on now. Let's go, buddy. Can I get your attention, please? There we go. Come on right through the portal. Ta-da! He walked through. Nice. And if I go through the portal now, there should be a sheep hanging out right inside this little fenced-in area I made. Awesome. So, Mistcraft portals have a lot of functionality and features. They're a lot of neat fun to play with, and like I said, they can kind of be any shape. So if you want to make a Stargate, go for it. Next up, we've got the Link Book Modifier. Uh, now, this is a very interesting block, and it's very expensive. You can see the recipe here is uh, eight blocks of diamond and a block of gold. So pretty expensive little item, but don't worry, it's uh, very powerful. I don't know if that's going to be the final recipe or not. I think he does have a plan to change his recipes eventually in the future, but it's a super powerful block. Let's check out what you can do with the link book modifier right now. So what I'm going to do is create a linking book within my age. And remember I told you that you cannot use link books within the same age that you're in. So if I try and open up this link to the overworld, it's grayed out. It's not going to let me tell once I'm in, for example, another world, though, I can go ahead and use the link book. But the problem is, when I use the link book, it falls to the ground. So it's sitting on the ground back there in my other age at the moment. Where is it at? Right there. What a, what a shame. So let's use the link book modifier block to modify some of the properties of this link book and check them out right now. Simply place your linking book in the slot here. And you can see it's a linking book to the overworld. Right now, there's five options to modify your link book. Number one is intra-age linking. Once you enable that, it allows you to use your link book within the same age that it's linked to. So I can now use it in the overworld. I can also use the disarm functionality, which I'll show you guys in a moment. Generate platform ensures a platform gets generated under the player when he travels to the age for the first time. And the following book means it won't fall on the ground when you use it. Finally, maintain momentum means you'll maintain your momentum as you're traveling. So if you're falling, for example, and you use your link book, you'll maintain your momentum as you travel. Pretty neat. So let's go ahead and check out a linking book that I've just created that has the intralinking and the following functionality. Pretty cool. All I gotta do is go outside. And when I right click on my book, you can see it's now a black screen, no longer grayed out, and I can just click and it'll whoosh, teleport me right back to that initial spot. How cool is that? So now with intralinking, I can use it within the same age. I can also, if you noticed, kept it on my character when I used it. It no longer fell to the ground. So I can right click and use the overworld linking book and it stays in my inventory. So for now, this book will not fall out of my inventory when I use it and it's pretty cool. Let's check out what a disarming book does. A disarming book is pretty much meant for traps. Pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and create a link book to the overworld and just give it the disarm functionality. Now it just looks like a normal old book, you can't tell any difference, right? Let's go ahead and place it in here. I'm gonna put down, for example, a link book stand. And say you want to trap somebody into using your overworld linking book, and uh, you wanted to catch somebody who was evil or being mean on your server, and this is a good way to either prank them, or if it's a PvP server, really good functionality. Let's go ahead and use the overworld linking book with the disarm functionality. Boom. Hey, where'd all my items go? 
The disarm functionality causes all the items on the player to be dropped to the ground once they use the book, whether they use it from their inventory or from a link book stand. So if we travel back here, you can see they've been disarmed. And when I went back, I uh, got all my items back in my inventory because they all fell to the ground, like I said. Pretty cool. Yeah, really neat functionality, if I do say so myself. And there's my overworld linking book that fell to the ground as well. So that is the disarm functionality. Awesome, isn't it? And with that, guys, I think I've pretty much covered most of the functionality available within Mistcraft. Now, there's probably one thing I didn't show you that I did say I would, so I'm going to go do it right now. I'm going to create for myself a new age, and I'm just going to give it the world modifier of, uh, or the terrain generation of cave world. Cave worlds are neat. And I'll let all the other functionality of the world get randomly generated. And since I've got my uh, following book with me, I can just go right there to age 13, which is now a cave world. And a cave world is exactly what it sounds like. You live inside a giant cave. Now, I'm pretty sure that this turned out to be a bright age, which is why it's so bright in here. Um, see, there's monsters down there spawning, because even though it's a bright age, like I said, it's always bright. Um, this should be uh, dark if it was normal lighting, but we got the bright symbol in this book. So that's why it pretty much looks lit up. But this is a giant cave that you're going to live in. It's basically, I think, if I'm right about this, um, kind of using the nether spawning code. So it kind of acts almost like the nether in that it has a roof. But you're in a giant cave and there's all kinds of cool stuff going on. A really neat world that's worth exploring. Uh, so that is a cave world. And let me just head back to the overworld and confirm that age 13 wound up with the bright symbol. You can see the different biomes we got. Uh, let's see. Bright. There it is. So that's why it was bright underground all the time. Pretty awesome, isn't it? So I think this is a pretty good wrapping up point on the Mistcraft Mod Spotlight. Pretty much showed you guys most of what's available in there, but there's a lot of different options available. Uh, combining different sky colors and different terrain features, and pretty much creating your own custom worlds all within dimensions. And like I said, I think the maximum number of different dimensions you can have is somewhere around 2 billion. So go ahead and create all the ages you want to your heart's content. This is Direwolf20 signing off on the Mod Spotlight of Mistcraft. Hope you enjoyed checking it out, and take it easy.